Uh, this is a sneak peek session. Um, everything that you're going to be seeing here is going to be part of the upcoming release, uh, 0131. And, you know, I'll, I'll have the details from the corresponding CLI versions. But broadly, um, we've been kind of rethinking what are the gaps in our integration with DBT and how can we make it kind of work really well out of the box. So the first thing that we've heard is uh, uh, Harshal, can you level. slideshow? Sorry, could you put it in slideshow yeah. mode? Sorry, I was going to do uh, do live demos on these things and not follow the okay. slides. Um, all right, all right. So the first thing was that column level impact analysis now works much more reliably. Um, so in the past, we've had issues where with DBT, the lineage graph would show correctly and you know show all the lineage that you'd expect. But if you go to the impact analysis tab, um, in certain cases where you know you've got ephemeral tables or um, you know certain other situations, column level lineage for the impact analysis view would not work fully. And you know I'm happy to say that now it will work fully and properly, um, and all of the APIs will let you see column level impact analysis all the way down, regardless of um, how many degrees. And so, you know, we can pick out, for example, this one, and we can see exactly how it was derived through all of the tables and, you know, follow and rename and things like that. Um, and, you know, this doesn't change the graph view. The graph view continues to work as, as it did before with, you know, being able to select columns and, and expand them out and see all of the um, all of the lineage as you'd expect. Um, in order to make this happen, we needed some backend support. And so making this work fully will require upgrading the both the CLI and the backend GMS um, in order to not overwrite things that um, and, and make sure that lineage works. The second is the second thing we heard is, hey, like, you know, great that I can see all of the DBT models, but I want to also understand how frequently are they run? Do I have changes in the duration of how long they take to build? Um, particularly for, you know, when, when making changes to models, often you can see duration spike from, you know, a couple seconds to, you know, many minutes. And often it's very easy to miss those if, if you're just running these things in Airflow or in CI. And uh, this way you can kind of surface all of that information right in the UI, understand what's happening, um, see if there's any failures, if there's any changes in duration, um, if there's any skips in, in timestamps. Um, and this really just pushes us towards better monitoring and better observability across your data ecosystem. And the final thing are a couple small quality of life improvements. So one is that if you go to the view definition tab, you'll now see a little selector where you can see both DBT, the raw code with all of the sources and references and your configs, and then also the compiled code that DBT actually executed against your warehouse or against Postgres in, in this case. Um, we've also made a number of improvements to the ability for us to support multi-project setups. So in, in multi-project setups where you have you know, models from one DBT project used as sources in the downstream, um, often this composed of section becomes kind of unwieldy because it shows both the Postgres table, the DBT model, and all of the sources. Um, and it becomes pretty hard to navigate throughout the UI. And so we're experimenting with a couple new flags um, to kind of make that experience more nice, um, avoid sources uh, in the lineage graph and, and actually just from being generated at all. And then that way you can um, kind of have, have a smoother experience that meshes with 
on the way people think about multi-project DBT setups. So anyway, if you if you are using multi DBT with multiple projects, we have better docs for it. I have a link for it here. Um, and then also please reach out to me and, and we can chat about how to make multi-project DBT setups a stellar experience as well. The other small improvement is now if you're using, you can provide multiple run result files to the DBT ingestion. So often this is useful if you know you have Airflow and you're running DBT build for every single model, then you can just collect all of those run results files and just send it into our in integration just once. Um, and so it's a little bit more ergonomic to kind of use Data Hub with the DBT integration wherever you are. Um, everything that I just showed will be available in 0.13.1 and you know, 0.13.1.3 for the CLI release. The model performance changes will require you to provide the run results JSON file from that DBT generates. Everything else will kind of work out of the box. So if you upgrade your connector, those things will just start getting generated and you'll start to see them in the UI. All right. That is all on my end. So 